Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the cilantro cowl. This is a cowl that is worked flat and then seamed in rows of double crochet stitches and puff stitches. For this project, you'll need a six and a half millimeter K crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle for your finish work and your seaming. You'll also need your yarn. I use two full skeins of Knit Picks Brava Bulky. This here is the Peapod colorway, in case you're wondering. And for this tutorial, I'll be using the same yarn in the cream colorway. And I use two full skeins of that yarn, each skein measuring 136 yards. If you'd like to substitute, just check your yarn label for a yarn that recommends a K crochet hook. And um, a good substitute, just off the top of my head, is the Lion Brands Wool Ease Chunky. And using that with this, the same K crochet hook would be great as well. So let's get this out of the way. And like I said, I'm going to be using the cream colorway for this tutorial. So to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers, then bring the yarn behind the loop that you just made, reach in with your crochet hook, and bring up a loop. And then tighten. Next we're going to make a starting chain. Our starting chain is 44 chains. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the loop. And I wanted to mention too, the full written pattern can be found on the Fiberflux blog, and I'll also add the link to the bottom of the video page. So that's one chain. We're going to make a total of 44. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, 41, 42, 43 and 44. So our starting chain is complete. And this is a very wide cowl. So let's move on to the foundation row. So to begin our foundation row, we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four. So in this chain, We'll work a double crochet. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert your hook into the chain, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Next, we're going to work a chain one. Then we're gonna skip the next chain, and in the chain after that, we're going to do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, Skip the next chain in the chain after that. Double crochet. Chain one. Skip the next chain in the chain after that. Double crochet. Chain one. And we're going to do this all the way across. So we've continued in this manner all the way across and we're coming up to the end of our foundation row. To finish off the row, we're just going to keep working in this sequence. We skipped a chain, worked a double crochet in the next chain, worked a chain one. And you're going to keep doing this until you have two chains left. You'll skip the second to last chain, and in the very last chain, you'll finish off the foundation row by working a double crochet. So our foundation row is complete. So let's move on to row one. To begin row one, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. And then, in the top of each double crochet, you can see there's a little hole here, we're going to be working 
a puff stitch, chain one, into the top of each one of these stitches. So to make a puff chain, a puff stitch, excuse me, we're going to wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the stitch, and bring up a loop. And I'm keeping everything nice and loose. You'll have one, two, three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same stitch, and bring up a loop. You'll now have one, two, three, four, five loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it back into the same chain, uh, stitch, keep everything nice and loose. You'll now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops on your hook. Finish off the puff stitch by wrapping yarn around hook. And again, I kept everything nice and loose and you might wanna kinda of like hold these down a little bit because you're gonna bring your hook through all of these loops on your hook. It can be a little tricky, so keep everything nice and loose. Next, you're going to chain one to close or lock the top of the stitch. So that is the puff stitch. Let's pull a little bit more yarn out here. Let's make a few more of these. Yarn around hook, insert it into the stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the same stitch, bring up a loop, five loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the same stitch, bring up a loop, seven loops on the hook, yarn around hook, hold it firmly, bring it through all seven loops on the hook, just like that, and then we'll chain one. So it'll look kind of like that. And if we go back to our original piece, that's what it looks like in the green. They're kind of stacked like that. So we're going to do this all the way across in each, the top of each double crochet all the way across. So work the next puff stitch bring it through all the loops, chain one to finish that off. So it's looking kind of like this. And like I said, we're going to do this all the way across. And if you do make a puff stitch and you don't like the way it looks, it's perfectly fine. Let's say we didn't like this one here. Just pull your hook out and carefully pull it apart. Put your hook back in there and just start over. So we're going to do this in each one of these double crochets all the way across. So we're coming up to the end of the row and we're just going to work a puff stitch in this last double crochet. Three loops, five loops, seven loops on the hook. Yarn around the hook, bring it through all seven loops, chain one. To finish off the row, we're going to work a double crochet in the top of the turning chain. And when I say that, I just mean this topmost chain. We'll just work a double crochet right into that. To finish off the row. So here is our completed row one. All those little puff stitches all the way across. So let's move on to row two. To work row two, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. And we're going to work a double crochet into the top of each puff. So if you look at your puff stitches, and my hook just popped off there, if you look at each puff stitch that you did in the previous row, you're going to see a little stitch on the top, this little loop here. We're going to be working our double crochets into the top of each one of those. So we're going to work a double crochet chain one right in there might be a little snug but it is there that was a double crochet chain one 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, all the way across. So we're coming up on the end of the row here, and we're just working a double crochet, chain one, on the top of each puff stitch. And then to finish off the row, we're going to work a double crochet into the top of the turning chain. Just like that. So you can see row two is complete. It's starting to look a lot like our finished cowl over here. So to finish your cowl, you're just going to keep repeating rows one and two until you reach the desired length. You can make it very long and loopy, or you can make it shorter in a, a cowl length like I did. I simply worked until I ran out of yarn. I got um, finished measurements. Get this out of the way. This is my finished cowl. I got finished measurements of, so when you wear it, you would turn it like this. Zoom out a little bit. When you wear it, you'll wear it like this. So I got 13 inches tall and then a circumference of 30 inches. You... To finish your cowl and to seam it up, don't fasten off. Just leave your working yarn attached. And then you're going to, obviously yours will be wider than this, like our original piece. But you're going to fold the edge where you stopped and the edge where you began together, just like that. And then you're going to take your hook, keep your working yarn handy, and this is your tail. You can, you can uh, keep this along the edge so you can crochet it together and weave it in as you go. But you're going to take your hook and you're going to go through both loops of one layer and both the loops of the other layer. Wrap your yarn around the hook. And at this point, you can either single crochet them together, the edges, or slip stitch. I chose to slip stitch. Either one will work fine. But to do the single crochet, you would wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. To do the slip stitch, you would just bring this loop through that loop. And then you'll do this all the way across. Go through both loops of this layer. Both loops of this layer. Bring your yarn around the hook. Bring it through all the loops of the layers. Bring that loop through the other loop. And this is much faster than sewing. You can also, you know, whip stitch them together. Again, we went through all four loops. Wrap your yarn around the hook. Bring that loop through. Bring that loop through. And you're just going to do this all the way across. And obviously yours will be much bigger. I don't know what kind of neck that would fit. Um, and let's, let me find the seam on this one so I can show you. This was my slip stitch seam. So you can see it's pretty, pretty subtle. Doesn't stick out too much. So that's how you'll do it. When you're finished, you'll just fasten off and take your tapestry needle and weave in the ends, trim, and then your cowl will be complete. The Knit Picks Brava is machine washable, but if you use um, a different yarn, be sure and check the care instructions of that yarn as well. So that is our cilantro cowl. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.